Now, as we go through this unit, remember that there is a cause and effect relationship with every event. Um, so we've seen the French and Indian War caused England go into debt. And the effect of that is that they, the English government needed to raise money. So they taxed the colonists. That caused the colonists to protest and smuggle and break British laws and feel as though they had no say in their laws. And so uh, the British crown then responded by taxing more and making different laws to punish the colonies. And so keep that cause and effect relationship in mind and be able to explain which event was caused by which event before it and resulted in what event. So now uh, we're going to look at the Boston Massacre. And this is a an event that has had been boiling, had been coming to to pass that that was driven by the Sons of Liberty and the fact that the British had um, had stationed a lot of troops in Boston and basically was um, in charge of the entire city. The city was under martial law um, or you know run by the army and uh, the colonists, had reached a boiling point, as you'll hear through whenever you look at any kind of uh, struggle when in, in history, whenever you look at people getting angry and angry and angrier, um, historians use that phrase boiling point to tell you that, you know, tensions were extremely high and something was going to happen. So on March 5th, 1770, uh, the colonists started to protest against the British in out by near the customs house in Boston, and um, the the setting was at night. If you, as you see over here on the right, it's dark at night. Um, and in this picture here, there's the moon. The uh, there were colonists that were sitting in a bar and they were getting drunk. And they were complaining about the British, and so they decided they were going to go and voice their complaints to the local barracks of of soldiers. And so the colonists were out with sticks and rocks and snowballs, and they started to throw these, throw all this at and shake their fists at and call names at the uh, British regulars near the customs house in in Boston. And what happened was really interesting. We're gonna we're gonna show you a couple videos probably. Like the what really happened was more like this. It was a mob. So the British troops lined up. And, and they were surrounded by, by colonists that were angry. And eventually somebody, one of the British soldiers, got hit in the head with a stick. And uh, they got sick of being yelled at, taunted, and um, all nearly beaten up. And so somebody in the crowd, we believe, yelled fire. And so these um, British regulars shot into the crowd. They shot their guns and... and you see here the the uh, British are shooting their guns, and we'll talk about these pictures here in a moment. And when the smoke cleared, five colonists were dead. And this is really serious because this is this is going to be the first time that colonists were killed by British soldiers. And that, if you are a citizen of a country, that is the biggest offense to have your own military killing your own people. So this caused a serious uprising. It made people or colonists very scared and angry, and it made the British. It put them in a funny situation, a funny spot. Where you know what are they going to do now? So is this open rebellion? Is it just a street brawl? What is it? Um, so there were two takes on the Boston massacre. Over here on the right is what has been the accepted version of what happened. Um, it looks like a mob. And in this mob, people get hurt. Sometimes people get killed. And they're, you know, very close quarters, a mob. Now over here, this is a, um, a picture drawn by Paul Revere, who you probably know his name and you will by the end of this. But Paul Revere drew this picture and had it posted in the newspaper and around the city of Boston. And notice, it's very different than this picture here. In this picture, you see colonists with sticks fighting. They are fighting the British. Over here, you see the British lined up 
and shooting these colonists, just shooting into the crowd. And you see that, I mean, this guy, he's got his arm out saying, please, no, stop. And this guy's just dying. This guy, he even has his back to the British. And still they're shooting at him in his back. And he's trying to help his friends. And so both pictures paint very different scenes. And as historians, we need to be able to figure out what really happened. And we also need to figure out why people did what they did. And so let's ask that question. Why did Paul Revere draw this picture? What was he trying to show the colonies? Was he trying to show what really happened? Because, I mean, we have a lot of accounts of what really happened, that over uh, almost 200 drunk colonists came out and started to trash the British. And it was a mob. It was described by many people as a mob. And so if you hear that, those accounts, it, it probably looked more like this. But Paul Revere was a member of the Sons of Liberty. And remember what the Sons of Liberty wanted to do. They wanted to actively oppose the British. And so, if you see a scene like this, if you weren't there at the Boston Massacre, or the Bloody Massacre, um, if you weren't there and you saw this, how would this make you feel about the British? To me... This, this looks like the British were shooting a bunch of innocent colonists. I mean, and even their dog, they made their dog watch. So this makes the British look really evil, nasty, awful. And this picture, on the other hand, makes the colonists look equally as guilty. They just didn't bring the right weapons to this. They brought sticks. They brought knives to a gunfight. So yeah, of course there's going to be five dead. But over here... Oh, man, it looks like the British are evil, nasty people. They're just shooting down their, their colonists in the streets. Look at all that blood. Ooh, everybody's bleeding. So the Sons of Liberty, their goal was to convince colonists that they needed to fight against the British. And it was to, their goal was to convince the British to get out of the colonies, to leave the colonies alone. And this, the Boston Massacre was an attempt to change people's opinion, to make them not support the British. Here's that picture a little bit bigger. And here's another picture of it, which shows, look at, they, the colonists are actively fighting against the British, not just yelling insults or throwing bricks from a distance. No, look at, and the British troops are surrounded See, there are colonists on all sides, and even this scary-looking snowman thing in the middle. So, you have to think about the facts of the events that took place in Boston to decide whether the British were, were right, or at least uh, permitted to shoot these people, <laughs> or if, you know, if the colonists drove them to it, or if the colonies were the victims. So there's the question, who were the victims? There's Crispus Attucks. And here also, I mean, even though these troops are lined up, look at, there are colonists behind them. There are colonists with clubs. It was, it, it has been accepted that the Boston Massacre was staged. And, at le and if it wasn't staged, at least it was a brawl where there were no innocent colonists being shot down. Um, after the Boston Massacre... Tensions were high, and the British continued to pass laws that angered the colonists. They passed the Tea Act in 1773, and the Tea Act was kind of funny because it lowered the tax of tea. It lowered the price of tea, but it still left a tax on the tea. And at this point, colonists continued to say, it doesn't matter, Parliament, what you do. We are going to only accept representation in parliament the only way we're going to accept your taxes is if we are if we have a voice in parliament so they went back to the sons of liberty cry of no taxation without representation um, so colonists saw the law as a way of hurting american merchants merchants who had been smuggling for years and trying to get the cheapest tea that they could 
Um, and so in several cities, the Sons of Liberty did things to protest the law. And in Boston, the Sons of Liberty held the Boston Tea Party. And Boston just happened to be the place where this Tea Party happened. Um, I believe it was also Charleston it was planned, and in Philadelphia it was planned, and New York even was planned. So these big port cities, uh, they, the Sons of Liberty groups wanted to make some kind of statement about this Tea Act. And in Boston in 1773, um, a group of Sons of Liberty dressed as Mohawk Indians boarded ships in the Boston Harbor. And they dumped crates of tea into the harbor as a protest against the Tea Act. We're talking millions of dollars worth of tea was dumped into the harbor. And um, so the, the British lost a lot of money because of this. And the Sons of Liberty looked like a very powerful group because of this. They could destroy the king's property. Um, and they were very careful not to destroy any other property on the ship. I believe that they broke a lock on one of the ch uh, uh, the captain's chests, and they even replaced the lock because they believed that personal property was very important, and it was uh, every man's right to have his own personal property. But the king's property, they destroyed it in the Boston Harbor. And you'll see in the next video what is to come.